It is the year 1939. The world is restless. In March, Czechoslovakia was dissolved and annexed by Germany. Japan and China have been at war since 1937. The civil war in Spain ended with the victory of Franco and his Spanish nationalists. The British Empire is still a first-rate world power. Chamberlain is the British Prime Minister. Hitler rose to power in 1933. Mussolini rules Italy. Germany and Italy have signed the Rome-Berlin Axis, a military alliance. Roosevelt is the American president. The United States of America is recovering from the Great Depression. Stalin is reorganizing the Red Army after the 1937 purges. Poland and Germany are butting heads. The Germans claim the city of Danzig. We are at the gates of the Second World War. Nazi Germany and the Communist Soviet Union are political opposites. Hitler says that Lebensraum, the Germans' vital living space, is in the East. Stalin never hides his expansionist policies towards the West. But on August the 23rd, 1939, Germany and the Soviet Union signed the Molotov-Ribbentrop Act, a non-aggression treaty. The treaty is received with disappointment in Japan. Some months before, Japan and Germany signed the Anti-Comintern Pact, a pact against the Communist Soviet Union. And now, while Japan is fighting the Soviets in Manchuria, Germany signs a pact with the Soviets. This is an affront to Japanese prestige. Relationships between Germany and Japan begin to cool down. September the 1st, Germany invades Poland. The Second World War begins. The British Empire and France declare war on Germany. September the 4th, Japan announces its neutrality. They already have their own war in China. Due to this war, the United States adopted trade restrictions with Japan. The American embargo creates large troubles for Japan. Japan is a rival for America's plan of economic expansion into the Pacific area. 1940. The war in Europe is raging. In March, Germany invades Denmark and Norway. Then in June, invades Belgium, the Netherlands, and defeats France, one after another. Winston Churchill becomes Prime Minister of the United Kingdom. Italy enters the war on the German side. The war in Africa begins. In the Atlantic, the British convoys suffer heavy losses from German U-boats. The Luftwaffe is massively bombing Britain. The RAF bombs several German cities. September 1940, Japan does not sign the Axis Pact. Indeed, Japan-Axis relations were never that close. Apart from the establishment of technical commissions and some diplomatic relations, there was never any significant type of coordination or military aid between Japan and the Axis. 1941. The war continues down the path we all know. After a pro-British coup, the Axis invades Yugoslavia and then Greece. March 1941. The United States President Roosevelt signs the Lend-Lease Act, allowing Britain, China, and the Soviet Union to purchase military equipment and to defer payments. June the 22nd, 1941. Operation Barbarossa. Germany attacks the Soviet Union. Again, the Germans fail to inform Japan before. Prime Minister Furimaro Kanoi feels betrayed. The Germans clearly trust Japan very little. August the 1st, 1941, the turning point. The Japanese start the occupation of French Indochina, claiming they need to stop all imports into China, including war supplies from the US. Indochina is controlled by Vichy France. Despite Vichy France not being officially part of the Axis, they have strong ties with Germany. August the 6th, the German government heavily protests and sends an ultimatum, retire or there will be serious diplomatic consequences. Japan doesn't lose time. On the same day, Japan declares war on Germany, France, and Italy, becoming a de facto British and Soviet ally.
Imperial Navy has the orders to sink all German cruisers in the area. The Italian base of Tianjin in China is occupied. Hitler and Mussolini are surprised, but they didn't have not considered Japan as an ally since 1940. The declaration of war on the Axis was a good strategic move. Japan has little to gain from an alliance with the Axis. Europe is far away. Germany and Italy can't help Japan, apart from maybe a naval squadron. And the Axis can, in no way, damage Japan. This war could be a way to circumvent the embargo and obtain from the British Empire at least some of the resources vital for their industries. Last but not least, the Soviets are now allies. The Japanese experienced Soviet firepower at Nomanhan, and now they don't want nothing to do with it. Churchill doesn't enthusiastically pursue this alliance, compared to the alliance with the Soviets, but they are not in a position to refuse such an ally. The Germans are doing all they want everywhere in Europe. The United States of America are isolationists, and who knows when and if they will enter the war. They will fight with Japan as they did in World War I. In the following days, the British 18th Infantry Division and the Australian 8th Division invade South Vietnam. The British have already invaded various French colonies. The entrance of Japan does not change too much in the European battlefield. September 1941, the Siege of Leningrad begins. German forces start the offensive against Moscow, Operation Typhoon. The Japanese involvement in the European conflict is limited. They control the Pacific and Indian Ocean. November the 19th, 1941. The auxiliary cruiser Cormoran is the first German Navy ship sunk by the Japanese off the coast of Western Australia. A small naval squadron of Namikaze, Shoakaze, and some mine layers are sent to the Mediterranean. A more important force with the old Issei and Otago class cruisers are sent to the Atlantic. During 1942, Japan will send a couple of brigades to Egypt. But most importantly, the British can move their Pacific fleet the HMS Hermes aircraft carrier, four battleships, and 20 cruisers into the Atlantic. The British convoys are now far more protected. All Australian, New Zealand, and Indian forces available are sent into Egypt. With the arrival in the Mediterranean Sea of the heavy cruisers HMS Dorkshire and the HMS Cornwall, the Italians have increasing difficulties to resupply their forces in Libya. Rommel and the Italians are now on the defensive end. To make things worse, the British have broken the Italian code, and know the times of departure of every convoy as well as all troop movements, so with fewer divisions they can keep up to the Axis. However, the Japanese resupply problems are still present. One million barrels of oil arrived from the Dutch East Indies, something else from the British refinery of Abadan, but it's not enough. For the USA, Japan is still an enemy. The USA embargo becomes even more strict. All Japanese assets in the US are frozen. On August 1st, the US established an embargo on oil exports to Japan. More than 80% of Japan's oil came from the United States. The Japanese Navy has now less than two years of oil remaining. The Imperial General Headquarters begin planning for a war with the USA. Twenty fifth of September, British and Soviet troops invade Iran. The USA protests. Part of the American industry, Henry Ford first, pressed the government to sell weapons to the Axis too. December twenty sixth, nineteen forty one, the Japanese take the decision. A Japanese naval force of six aircraft carriers under the command of Nagumo depart from the Kareli Islands and arrives undefeated near Hawaii. December 7, the Japanese launches the attack on Pearl Harbor. The attack leaves eight American battleships out of action, killing 2,400 men. December 8, the United States declares war on Japan, and only on Japan. There is consternation at London for the move of their ally. They did not know of this attack. 
British diplomats hurry up to ensure U.S. they are not going to make any type of hostile action against the USA. But they can't renounce the alliance with Japan. At this point, USA will never enter the war at their side, and UK redeployed almost all their forces to Europe. So now Japan could really wipe out all British presence in the Far East in some weeks, from Hong Kong to Burma to Singapore, and seriously threatening India and Australia. December 12th, Japanese land on the southern Philippine Islands. After a brief invasion, Thailand enters the war on the Japanese side. December 23rd, Japanese invade Wake Island. Manila is captured. No war with the British, so the Japanese can use all their forces against the USA. Japan appears to be unstoppable. British Royal Navy has the strict order to avoid any type of action against the U.S. Navy. However, they are fighting along the Japanese in the Seven Seas, and an incident is only a matter of time. December 31st, near Iceland, the destroyer USS Reuben James is torpedoed by a Japanese submarine based on Scapa Flow, Scotland, killing more than 100 sailors. Tension heightens between the USA and UK as a result. British offer apologies to the American government. January 11th, American B-25s sink a Japanese oil tanker in British waters near Nassau, the Bahamas. February 5th, Roosevelt promises aid to all the enemies of Japan, asking Congress to sell materials to Germany and Italy, although without Lend-Lease. Hitler and Mussolini make overtures to the U.S. government. U-boat campaigns in the Atlantic is limited. Only British Navy and British waters are attacked. February 9th, the British Navy forced an American convoy directed to Sweden to go back. February 20th, the Phoenix Convoy Incident. A Japanese destroyer who is escorting a British convoy east of the Gilbert Islands is sunk by a USA naval force including the USS Phoenix. The British merchant ships, after its passengers are allowed 30 minutes to board lifeboats, are sunk. February 22nd. 1942. Great Britain declares war on USA. The World War starts now. There are immediately the first clashes in the Atlantic between the U.S. and Royal Navy. Swordfish aircraft from the HMS Furious sink two American destroyers near Newfoundland. The USS Roper sinks a British submarine. Despite some British believing it's time to recolonize, Churchill declared war on the USA only because he thinks it's inevitable. Britain can't allow a gigantic flow of U.S. supplies, weapons, and oil to arrive in Europe. And better to fight the USA now, when the U.S. Army has not reached its full potential. Churchill hopes that the war will result in a long stalemate, making war unpopular in the United States, followed by a negotiated peace. Australia and South Africa announce that they will continue to fight at the British side, although they will not officially declare war with the United States. There are riots in India, as the USA is a hope for their long-desired independence. Canada immediately declares its neutrality in this war, with the USA asked to occupy the ports of Halifax, Vancouver, and Newfoundland until the war ends. Canada can't permit such a request. February 27, 1942, American troops start the invasion of Canada. The Americans follow a plan called War Plan Red. The first U.S. Army lands at St. Margaret's Bay, then assaults the port of Halifax. The Canadian power plants near Niagara Falls, held by the Royal Canadian Regiment, are taken after a bloody battle of three days. This is followed by an invasion on three fronts, from Vermont to take Montreal and Quebec, from the Midwest to capture the strategic nickel mines of Ontario, and from North Dakota to seize Winnipeg. Winnipeg is taken after two weeks. Vancouver is easily taken. 
It denies Britain and Japan a naval base and cuts Canada off from the Pacific Ocean. Canadians have a defense plan, the Defense Scheme Number 1. They plan to rapidly occupy Seattle, Great Falls, Minneapolis, and Albany. No hope of holding the objectives. The idea is to divert American troops away from Canada long enough for the British to arrive with reinforcements. This plan fails almost immediately, or better it does not start at all. And the reinforcements from Britain will never arrive, apart from two squadrons of hurricanes. Britain knows it's impossible to defend Canada against the much larger United States. And they have other more urgent problems, like Germany breathing down their throat. The British Army is not the Red Army. Their resources are limited. The Canadians are alone. And after some initial success, the US invasion is stopped. The US Army fails to take Halifax. They only occupy New Brunswick, cutting Nova Scotia off from the rest of Canada at the railway junction in Moncton. The US Army is stopped at the gates of Montreal and Toronto. Canadians are experienced military, better armed, and can take more advantage out of their terrain. Someone sees parallels with the Soviet Finland Winter War. The USA Army is not ready for the war in 1942. Obsolete equipment, poor training, and a lack of experienced officers. Very few saw combat of any kind. The USA has no real tank force. The primary tank is the M3 Lee, a tank with a very limited 75mm gun, smooth tracks and an impractical high profile. It can be killed from almost anywhere and in any kind of terrain. The B24 is yet in service but with low numbers and there are the B17s. The USAAF's best fighters are the P40 Tomahawk and the P39 Aero Cobra. The P38 is already operational. The US Navy's battleships were never tested in war, except for their diving ability at Pearl Harbor. Hitler and Mussolini are pleased for the entry into the war of the USA. Hitler does not take the Americans too seriously, but apart from the stop of the Lend-Lease, he hopes that the US will distract the important British force away from Europe. Europe, 1942, Eastern Front. The Soviet winter counter-offensive pushes the freezing German army back 100 kilometers from Moscow. The front stabilizes. The siege of Leningrad continues. Part of the British Navy leads the Mediterranean to fight in the new Atlantic front. Royal Navy air carriers Hermes, Penelope, Repulse and the battleship Prince of Wales are deployed in the Far East, but far from the war zones. In the western northern Atlantic, the American Navy try to block British-Canadian traffic, but they do not attempt to openly face the British fleet, nor for the moment send soldiers or materials into Europe. The Royal Navy is still the strongest navy in the world. There are the first collaborations with the Germans. German U-boats in the St. Lawrence Bay sunk several merchant ships. US public opinion, after some differences, will attempt to fight at the Hitler's side, as in our timeline they accepted to fight for Stalin. Pacific Ocean, 11th of March, the Japanese land on Mindanao. April 31st, MacArthur evacuates the Philippines. 2nd of May, 1942, Japanese land forces invade Indonesia, fearing a similar action by the Americans. The Dutch government in exile of London can't do anything. There are weak protests from London. The Dutch are allowed to continue to administer Indonesia. The Dutch East Indies alleviate part of the oil problem to the Japanese Navy. 4th to the 8th of May 1942. Japanese forces under Admiral Shima make unopposed landings on Samoa, opening the Battle of the South Pacific, the first battle in which aircraft carriers engage each other. The US sinks the Japanese light carrier Shoho. The US lose their fleet carrier Lexington and the Yorktown is damaged. Japan begins the invasion of the, of the Aleutian Islands. Japanese midget subs based in the Canadian port Prince Rupert sink a support ship in Alaska. British Navy bombs the US coastal bases Portland, Boston, Norfolk, Savannah, Charleston. The 19th of June, Operation Jubilee, 
a raid by British and Canadian forces with 20 Mark IV Churchill tanks on Portland, Maine, ends in disaster. They come under heavy gunfire and most are killed or captured by the American defenders. British bombers short S-29 Sterlings based in Toronto and bomb the US industrial Midwest, including Detroit, Pittsburgh and Chicago. The British try to inflict as much damage as possible to the US industrial forces, but this would require constant and heavy attacks. It took years and years of bombing to put down the German industry, which is only a quarter of the US industry. The British attacks are pinpricks. The land lease has been stopped, and it was almost 10% of the British effort and around 7% of the Soviet effort. Africa. The British army in Egypt is weakened since Australians and Canadians have returned home and the Indian troops are now unreliable and after the redeployment of the British fleet in the Atlantic, the Italians have better supplied forces. Rommel is ready for a new offensive, turns his troops to Kazala and destroys the British 1st and 7th Armoured Division. 21st of July, Mursa Matru, 150 kilometers from Alexandria, falls to Axis. Japan's leaders hoped that after Pearl Harbor, the United States would negotiate a compromise rather than a long war. Things are going differently. The Imperial Navy try another blow. They plan to take Midway in a rush before American reinforcements could arrive. 4th of June, 1942, Admiral Nagumo orders the aircraft to attack Midway. The Battle of Midway opens. The Battle of Midway will be almost the same as in our timeline. The US has broken the Imperial Navy's code and know practically everything that the Japanese are going to do. The British do not participate in this battle, nor generally to the Japanese effort against the USA in the Pacific, because they do not want to help Japan build their own empire in Asia. However, due to the absence of a British threat, probably things would have been slightly better for the Japanese. Nimitz has positioned his three aircraft carriers to ambush the Japanese. The dive bombers from Yorktown and Enterprise sunk the carriers Kaga, Hiryu and Soryu. The Japanese sunk the carriers Yorktown and the Hornet. The Battle of Midway comes to a close. Nogumo cancels the Midway invasion. Again, the Japanese are not able to inflict a decisive defeat to the US Navy. But such a war will not be decided by one decisive battle as the Japanese hope. The Japanese lose three carriers that they can't replace, and almost as critical is the loss of its experienced air crew. Their training program is inadequate due to the chronical fuel problems. Conversely, the loss of two carriers is not a tragedy for the USA. There are 24 Essex-class carriers under production, and the US will have about 100 carriers of various sizes in 1945. However, this battle gives the Japanese free reign in the Pacific for six months. August 1942, Canadian Front. The Canadians fought bravely but can't just hope to stand against America for long. The USA has vastly more men, tanks and aircraft and the means to make more very quickly. The US has now around 2 million men for the invasion. The Canadians can muster 400,000 men, some very experienced units, but only 24 tanks. Most military equipment coming from England is intercepted by American naval patrol. Canadian manufacturing is heavily crippled in this war, as most of the industry is within the first 100 kilometers of the US border. Montreal falls in July. Ottawa and Toronto in August. And then Halifax. September the 2nd, 1942. Canada surrenders. There is partisan resistance which continues for some time in the final war. November the 1st, 1942. US Marines land on Christmas Island. The Japanese defenders are overwhelmed. The Japanese make several attempts until December to retake the island, but the landing Japanese forces are always driven back. In January, after five naval battles and almost daily aerial battles and naval bombardment, the Japanese abandon their efforts to retake the island. America is striking back. <laughs> <laughs>